All right, we're gonna do a fly fishing tip video here. And this time it's gonna be something with the two-handed rods. And you can probably see in the background, they've got a bunch of um, snow on the ground. It's a warmer than normal morning for today. We're late winter, early spring. And this is when everybody starts to really get back serious into steelhead fishing. We don't have the ice problems today, but most mornings, even in mid early spring you could have some frosty mornings or we could just have a cold day below freezing so we're going to talk about how to swing flies and control the ice on your rods and build it and on your line so it's a nice control video and swing it flies with a spade rod we're going to pretend that it's cold and icy at the moment because you can probably see in the background it's a little foggy we're just having a warm spell but obviously that's not going to last long it's going to get cold again and if you're on a trip or you're on the water, it's your chance to fish. So we got to deal with the conditions we have. And here's the tip to deal with some icy conditions. All right. Part of all this ice control thing is the gear we use. And in this situation, in this water right at the moment for a sink tip, um, I got 10 foot of T8. That's just what I happen to be using here to match this water. Now for the, the Skagit head, and obviously we're using Skagit, so we use Skagit a lot, especially during the winter. Uh, I have a uh, Game Changer 3 on here, which means that the very tip is probably about a Type 3 sink, intermediate center, and a little bit of float on the end. The reason why I use that is it gets most of the fly line under the water surface. So there's a few advantages to that for us right now. One is, if it's sitting in the surface on a full floating, they can make ice all up and down that fly that running line, and after a while, your skagit head gets to be about a quarter inch in diameter. You want to talk about overloading the rod. So it stays under the under the water and it helps keep the ice off it. The other thing is, is we're winter steelhead fishing. This water is ice cold. Today, yes, we are a little bit above freezing. Um, that means the snow is melting and the water temperature is plummeting. I haven't taken temperature. I bet you it's liquid ice. It's somewhere around 32, give or take a degree literally liquid ice because of the snow melt. So that means that we have to really slow the swing down. It kind of as a joke is we eat a sandwich through the swing. It's so slow. So with these game changers and even the intermediate heads that we use, that gets under that top current and it doesn't get pushed to the swing as fast and can really slow that swing down. We're talking a 30 or 40% reduction in the speed of the swing. That fly can come around, we can keep it low, and on the swing, instead of the current pushing on your tip in your driver head, causing it to swing up off the bottom, it helps keep it at depth longer. And it keeps it slower. So that fly is coming across that fish nice and slow. Let me get a hold of the fly here. And that fly is coming across there, and it's just hanging out just like a nice little yummy morsel. And they can watch that. They can watch that flash. They can see that action. And hopefully with... The longer that they watch it, the more that'll trigger a an eat response, a strike response, a grab response. So we found that during the winter, we really got to slow the swing down, and we got to keep it deep. And these intermediate and game changer lines help us do that. All right, along with the, the the head that we're using, we're using as you might notice the is the running line. I think this is like 40 pound mono. I'm not sure if it's OPS or who it is. Usually what we're using is what we get our hands on. Uh, but we like the 40-pound uh, um, mono running line. One, it's, it's fat enough we can hang on to it. It's tough enough and durable enough that we don't have, we're not breaking it and losing our expensive um, tips and driver heads. And as you can probably watch, it takes, it's got its downfalls. It does tangle a little bit at times. It gets a little coil in the cold, but more importantly, It'll shoot, and the nice thing about it also is we get a little bit of ice built up in the guides, it'll still shoot through those guides for a while before you have to clean them out. The other thing is, is as you notice in the presentation of the swing, our tips are not coming in towards us, it's keeping it out. So that's, since it's light, the running line is very helpful, helpful for that. The other nice thing about this stuff, and I've been kind of personally thinking about just kind of gradually going through all model running lines is, one, it's inexpensive. We beat the snot out of our fly lines. And the other thing is, is they come in 100 foot coils. So let's just say it's getting a little beat. You chop 20 feet off, put a new loop on and keep going. Now you got an 80 foot. That's a lot of running line. You're not going to be casting 80 foot of running line too much, especially on this river. 
so they're they're inexpensive. You can just cut back when they get beat, replace it, the, the loops. So it's it's an easy maintenance. Plus, it also helps with your reel capacity too. If you've got a reel that doesn't have a lot of capacity, and you put on a traditional fly line style running line, that takes up a lot of space. Where these monos don't take up maybe a third of the space. So it, it actually helps with reel capacity too. That's one of the things with the mono, but obviously we use mono running lines during the winter because even when you get a little water on it too, it falls off and it works really good for this type of fishing. Yeah, one, um, one other thing is everybody asks what we're using for rods. Well, today in this video, I'm casting one of my favorite rods. It happens to be a 12 and a half foot seven weight. And this rod likes to sketch it really handy. And the most water flows on the Salmon River and a lot of my other rivers this just this rod just fits and works and it's convenient the, the the length of the rod i can cover the water handle on the line i want and of course won't run it up and down the river it works really good but it's just a nice gadget setup with this 12 and a half footer and it's not heavy and i can fish it all day so right now like i said this has been my workhorse lately is this 12 and a half foot seven weight but the whole point of this as you can see, I'm using the rod tip and keeping the high. I can mend a little bit, but that intermediate part of the line cuts the flow of the water surface, doesn't ice up, and I can keep that running line just off the water. So all this time, this running line really does not get wet. That's the nice thing about the mono, is the swing is true. It's not getting pulled into me because of the lightweight of the mono. The other thing is, if there's a little bit of line or water on this, being mono, being thin, it falls off. So we're not carrying any water into the rod pit. Of course, here again, and you can see how I'm keeping the rod off. I can keep the running line off. I can track my swing. I can actually do it or not mend a little bit with this. And I can control my swing. All this time, I'm not laying the running line on. That's the whole key. Keep everything dry. Now you might not be able to do an 80, 90 foot cast and swing, but it's winter. Um, often we just got to pick the water we can effectively fish with the conditions that we have. So if you have to make a really cross along, you want to fish a really long pool, you, yes, you're going to have some uh, running line laying on the water. But if it's mono, very often that'll shake off and break off as it comes into the rod tip and keep the icing down. Um, I'll either put up with a little bit of ice and a very long cast to swing, or I'll just pick water that I can comfortably cast with a shorter, a shorter swing and cast, and I can keep everything from icing up. Whoops, we got a little snarl, no problem. Take advantage of it. The, this model does tangle a little bit more, but it does shake up pretty quick. Oops, got one up in the rod here. There it's out, and we just use it to our advantage. We come around, we pull up, yeah, we're getting a little shallow, we'll just put a little bit of a bowl in there. And we found a bottom. Just raise the rod tip up. Here again, get this out. And the recast. I am holding back some of the running line so I can actually slow the swing down. Keep the fly line more on a dead drift. That keeps everything slower, keeps everything deeper, longer. A little bit of a tip during the winter, you want to really slow your swings down. You really want to run them deeper than you normally would. These fish don't want to move far for, for a fly at this time, so you kind of got to almost serve it up to them. Now here, when I recover my running line, I'm being mindful not to lay it on the water. Once again, keep the running line dry. And this cast, I just kind of whoops, got caught up in my fingers. I'm having a little snarl problem right now because I'm thinking about it. And they take out the snarl, watch the fish eat it. I swear they know when we're struggling or tangled up, that's when they eat. There we go. If I get bigger loops, that kind of helps keep the snarls down. Let's try it again. Mm 
There we go. You just gotta, you just gotta play around and manage your line. All right, now we're gonna collect up the running line. Here again, normally what we do is we just throw it on the water around our feet. Um, obviously, we want to keep it dry, so we're not going to do that. What you'll notice, I'm making some pretty big loops. And in the process of doing the loops, I'm trying to keep them relatively stacked neat in my fingers. A neat coil in your fingers generally means it'll, in the cast, it'll come off neat. And in the process, we got hung at the bottom. And now we're off. And on this way. That one came off nice and neat and orderly that time. Um, but if you do get a little snarl, it gets wrapped around the reel, don't panic. Just untangle it, shake it out, feed it out to your rod tip, lift up your rod, and then just nip that line down through. That's a great presentation for the winner. Yes. All right, no problem. You can use it. Yep, it's still going. <laughs> Because we had a little snarl doesn't mean you can't take advantage of it. Clean it up, get it out there, then nip the line down into a swing. Nice slow swing. Took all that slack and used it to our advantage. A quick, I'm going to take a couple of minutes and talk about presentations here. Even though this is a video about controlling the ice in your guides. And what I want to do is, since you're watching some casts and some swings, I'm going to take a minute and talk about what I'm doing as a presentation. So when that cast goes out, obviously I'm keeping the rod tip a little high on purpose and not letting the, the um, running line um, drop on the water because I don't want to get it wet. But here again, I got a lot of line in the air between the rod tip and the fly line, and I'm supporting a lot of that running line high by keeping my rod tip high. And as you watch, as the swing goes through, I'm dropping that fly line or excuse me, I'm dropping that rod tip at pace with the swing. And what I can do by doing that is I can keep the tension off the driver head, a.k.a. the skagit head and the tip, and allow the tip to bite deeper into the water, sink faster, sink deeper, stay deeper. And also I can control the speed of the swing a lot more by keeping the tension off from everything, and the current ain't sweeping the fly and the fly line and everything through the water column faster. That means I can slow that swing down considerably. And if I got a little extra fly line, or excuse me, running line in my hands, I'll feed that out gently through my fingers as the fly starts to swing. That means I get a little bit of a downstream drift, and I keep that swing going really slow, and that fly hanging down at the bottom of the strike zone. And keeping the pressure off the skagit head and the sink tip, which means that I, the current doesn't push on it and cause everything to swing up. So that, what that does is I get a very slow, deep swing, which is what we need for these winter cold conditions. All right, folks, this is going to conclude our um, spay fishing tip um, video. The initial part of the tip video was to be how to swing flies and deal with the ice and the guides and icing lines, but it also turned out to be a little bit of a tip for presentation or presenting flies during the winter so I hope you found this video very useful not too dry but very informative also in the comments if you would please put down what you'd like to see for future fishing tips because we're always looking for an idea to do another tip video on because apparently they've been pretty popular so we'd like to continue doing it because people like watching them and listening to them so please leave us in the, in the comments some suggestions for future tip videos and hopefully we'll get to them and put them up and take advantage of your um, suggestions until then um we got lots more coming so obviously if you like this hit the subscribe button the little bell icon on the end that'll let you know when we got the next video up until then See you on the folks, and uh, hopefully this was useful to you. Good fishing to you. This is Jay at JPEC Guides and Lost River Fishing. We are a year-round fly fishing catch and release guide service. We fish the Lake Ontario tributaries. And then during the spring and the summer, we also fish the inland trout streams, classic dry fly fishing. During the heat of the summer, we will do the warm water fishing for bass and pike. If you're interested in any of our outings 
or have any questions, please feel free to email us at fish at lostriversfishing.com. Hope to hear from you, and if you have any questions, feel free to contact us.